Welcome back to Adri's Homestead Life. Today we are going to make a sourdough bread. We've got all sorts of projects going on. I Behind me the aga is now off. You know when I make yogurt I usually just leave my like a quart jar just here on the side and just that just gives the perfect temperature for making the yogurt. But because the aga is offline, I would love to make yo uh, yogurt because I've got all these beautiful berries coming in. I, I bought a, a yogurt maker. It's a very affordable from Amazon and I've used it first time yesterday. So we are going to make yogurt. After we made the yogurt, we are going to out to pick the broad beans and the peas. My plan was to pick that a few days ago, but because it was raining and I had a plan to go up with my friend for his birthday meal, I didn't have a time to harvest it, so we are going to harvest the broad beans and the peas today. Also, we are having a goulash party. I'm just making a... Start get making the bread, so we're going to put three, three and a half cups of bread flour and it's about lukewarm water about three three hundred and fifty milliliter and I'm just gonna give it using my hand make it make a dough so we are having a goulash party by the cabin on an open fire and I would like to get ready mm, because I'm going to put quite a lot of things in that goulash so uh, I just thought you know save me some time tomorrow if I get things ready like prep the veg the meat and just have an idea you know how I'm gonna make it have a look in the pantry what we can put in it so yeah that's the plan today I've also managed to pick the elderflower because that was my plan a few days ago but I uh, I nearly run out what I mean by that, that all the elderflower now gone to making berries <laughs> stage, so I only managed to harvest like half a basket full. So I now have to wait till next year to make an elderflower freeze dry and make tea. But what I have done, I've just, uh, I'm gonna make elderflower cordial. So they're now chilling in the fridge since yesterday. I've just literally poured some water over the elderflower, put lemon and oranges and I'm gonna leave there for a few days and we're just gonna make a cordial. Wow, this dough it's a bit sticky so I'm gonna put a bit more flour. That's probably gonna end up now about four cups of bread flour and 350 milliliter of lukewarm water. So we just give it a good, good mix until all the flour nicely incorporates. And I'm just gonna put the shower cup on it. You know, my favorite kitchen tool. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Hack. And uh, I'm just leave it for a couple of hours. And while while the dough is resting, we are going to make the yogurt. So, how is your garden doing, or cooking projects, or preserving, or whatever you do? Animals around the, around your homestead, your household. Are you busy now in a garden? What's growing? What doing well for you? What's not? I've just actually, it's about 10 o'clock now, it's an overcast outside, it's not too hot, so it's a perfect gardening day. Um, I've, I've just pulled up half of that dill from the polytunnel of that bed, and I finally put the polytunnel cucumbers in there, and a few loofah, so it's going to be a bit behind now, but never mind, you know, so I'm attempting to make a gator Lufa sponges, so we'll see how it goes. Right, this is now 
nicely cooperated so I'm just gonna cover this and leave it for a couple of hours put this aside let's make the yogurt Let's make the yogurt. So I've set the yogurt maker for eight hours and the yogurt is more, it's a bit liquidy. I want it to be a little bit thicker. I even used some extra milk powder. I just follow the instruction from the book, but I think I need a bit more practice. But I have tried it and it's like a quite a beautiful, a little bit runny Greek yogurt flavour. So I am happy with that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to blitz this, we're gonna make raspberry and I put some few black currants in there and strawberry yogurt, so I made two different. So first we are going to make the raspberry. I'm going to use as an extra sweetness some are uh, honey. So I'm gonna blend the two together, fold it in the yogurt, and then we're going to fill these jars. So I blended the raspberry in a blender with a bit of, a couple of tablespoons of honey. And now we are going to pour the yogurt and mix it together. And let's have a taste test. Okay. Right. Let's pour this in. Right, give it a stir and let's have a taste test. And this is our homemade raspberry yogurt. And I think if I leave it in a fridge for overnight, that will thicken up even more. Let's see the consistency. It's actually quite thick but you know let's see what it tastes like and next we are going to make strawberry yogurt I was using these little jars because like a nice portion size for one person right let's try this Delicious. Let's fill these jars. So we used goat's milk and pasteurize the milk first, let it cool back. Uh, because I haven't done yogurt for a while, I had to go to the supermarket and buy some. Greek yogurt, yogurt with live culture. I poured that in with the pasteurized goat's milk. I put it in the yogurt maker and our yogurts are done. Look! I'll get it closer so you can see. This is our yogurt. Let's make the strawberry yogurt. I just can't stop sniffing this. Oh, strawberry from the garden. It smells divine. So, again, we're gonna pour a yogurt in our jug. And then we're gonna mix this together. With our strawberry and honey. 
sauce. Give it a good stir. Have a taste test and fill those jars. And they can go to the fridge. And it's only 10 o'clock in the morning, so why tonight? Definitely tomorrow they'll be ready. Our beautiful homemade yogurt. All right. Okay, this is now. Okay, let's have a test. Let's try this. Mm, that's delicious. All right, fill these jars. And I'm gonna write on top of the lid strawberry. And the other three, raspberry. And now because it's all the berries coming in, I will continuously gonna make yogurt. It's a very good use of our goat's milk. And from the yogurt then we can make all sorts. I'm gonna make buttermilk, sour cream, you know. I'm gonna make cheese. I would like to learn how to make hard cheeses. You know, when we wax the cheese. And butter. I've got the cream separator, so now we're gonna make butter and we can freeze it. I put some very cool things to freeze the butter in, like a silicone mold. All right, so our lovely raspberry and strawberry yogurt is done. I'm going to label, so this is strawberry. And raspberry. And they can go to the fridge. And let's see if Al likes it. See you in the garden. Just before we go out, remember the one more thing I wanted to do in the kitchen. When, because when I gonna come in, a papa boy would appreciate a nice cold drink. And in this nice day, I'm going to make ginger mint basil and plum cordial. I've got this, I've harvested this Victoria plum last summer, so it's a year ago. And I've made the cordial, so I steam juiced it and made the cordial and I put it in a freezer. So I froze them in these plastic uh, water bottles. And this is the perfect way to preserve it. So I've took it out of the freezer and I'm going to mix this, this much in, in with two liter of water. Give it a good stir. And I'm going to use some oranges and some lemon. I usually keep the peel or the ends to make my homemade cleaning product. So I'm just going to slice this up. I'm going to put that in a bottle like that so I'm gonna a little bit just tear the ginger mint some extra flavor and same the basil just harvested both from the garden and do a few slices the same with the lemon Is the juice in like that, maybe a bit more orange, and just give it a good stir. And I'll fill these jars. 
and put this in a fridge and this is going to be a really nice and refreshing drink when we come in from the garden. There you go. A little bit more. That's it. I'll put the lid on and I'm going to put this in a fridge and we have a nice refreshing cold drink. It's a hard work in a garden. See you in the garden. Welcome to the garden. We are going to harvest the broad beans today. They are all over the place. So I'm not sure what to do, whether to pull it out and harvest it or find the larger ones, harvest and leave the rest. The only reason I'm thinking about pulling out because they are literally all over the place. It must have been a big thunderstorm and wind while I was away for a week. But these are not quite ready, so I think I'm gonna leave it and just harvest what is ready. Actually really nice. They've done really well this year. Right. I will harvest this. And I'll bring you back when I'm finished. Yes. Finished picking the broad beans for today. And I have already got a three basket full. I've just pulled one plant out to show you how prolific today's harvest is. So look how much beans on that. Absolutely loaded, and it still loads on there. So I need to think what we're gonna do with all these broad beans now. It's raining. I hope it's not gonna be. I hope it's let us finish this picking the peas because I won't really want to pick the peas next. So, but that is that is an amazing broad bean harvest right here. Okay, so I think we're done. So we've got three basket full of these lovely broad beans. Let's go pick the peas. We are ready to harvest the peas. 
I remember this one is a magnolia purple and it's looking amazing. Let me show you. Can you see the other side? How beautiful. It's gone all the way to the top. And we're going to pick all these lovely peas today. I try to pick one. It's really filled up. Let's see. What's in there? so sweet really nice it is about lunchtime now so it wouldn't be an ideal time to pick the peas but because it's overcast <laughs> um, it's okay and it, mm, it's lovely sweet still not ready these peas are I don't want to pick what is not Field. The pods, but again, I don't want to leave it to go over, then it gets a bit bitter. So I just try to get to this stage, it's nicely filled. I'm hoping I'm not going to have people under the tea moth. Because the past few years... I had problem with growing peas. This shoot. This magnolia purple looking good. My other tunnel... It's... Other story. Something munching on them. Still only like five inches if that tall. But this one is really good. So I'm carrying on doing all this. I'm going to show you when we're all done. Right. I've managed to pick this much pea today. The most of the pea, I think it's still in a developing stage. So I leave it to mature a bit better. But yeah, let's go take this to the house. Look at this harvest. The three basket full of broad beans and the one half full basket full of peas. Right, back to the kitchen. Next step, I'm gonna put about a cup of the sourdough starter. And I'm going to mix this in really well with the dough. So dough's been resting now for a Good few hours. Should have done this step a bit earlier, but I was busy in the garden. So really make this stove smooth, and then I will gonna work on this stove for a good five ten minutes, and I'll put. Uh, about a tablespoon of salt and I worked that really well as well and we're going to cover back up so the dough is now ready you see and the bowl is clean so now I'm going to put just a little bit of a little bit of oil about 
teaspoon, bottom of the glass bowl, and just turns around like that. And I will cover with this and we leave it for a good few hours again and I'll bring you back. We are making goulash today and I'm going to make it for you. We need some log to chop. Hello? He, he called me Giggle Pants. <laughs> Did he? Oh dear. I'm just collecting all these locks. Oh yeah. Let's see how the goulash do. So what I've done so far the fire I've put some lard in a pot and the onion a bit of a garlic scape give it a good few minutes and then we put oh actually I did put some kohlrabi in there as well and then we put the marinated meat Keep topping up, you know, the fire, make sure it don't go out. I'm gonna go some more locks on it. How I this up, I'm gonna put the logs on. Keep it going. So we've got the lard, onion, garlic scape, the marinated meat, and I've just put some sausages in it and carrot, you know, from the pantry. I'm gonna put an other carrot. And I've already put one quart of beans. I'm gonna put another jar of green French bean bean. And we're just going to put some tomato paste. So we put tomato paste. A flavor. any more seasoning until I try it because in that meat and I've marinated it put loads of spices in them so give it a good stir and put the lid back on Goulash is ready. Look. Looks 
yummy. Enjoy. It is the next day and let me tell you, that goulash, what we've just made together, it was delicious. And I've managed to get so much as a freezer meal to the freezer. It's just right behind us in the freezer. And we have still got a big pot full to use up the next couple of days. What is amazing. Also that yogurt we've made, that was delicious. The fresh berries, the especially the raspberries and the strawberries from the garden, it is it made that yogurt. And I think I'm gonna like that yogurt maker. So the next couple of days I'm probably gonna do it again because I really want to stick to it and I'm gonna I would like to try making that yogurt continuously every week. So with all the fresh fruit coming to the house now the next couple of months could make us a delicious yogurt homemade yogurt and the broad beans i honestly i've never had a broad bean harvest that prolific like this year's and i've still got a huge pot full of broad beans shell broad beans to you know to deal with so i need to find some recipes and preservation methods to um, to, to deal with all that. Also the peas, we've got some peas as well, so that's something I need to think of. So the next couple of months now, good few months, is gonna be all about to, you know, how to deal with all the produce what's coming in. So fresh eating is the first priority and then um, obviously preserve them for later use. So, I am very happy to announce that after nine months, looks like my freeze dryer is fixed. So, hopefully, we're going to make a lots, of, lots of freeze drying as well together. So, I'm just tidying up our laundry and um, I'm going to crack on with some new jobs. So, see you very soon. Bye, friend.